the book of Acts chapters 17 to 20. Chapter 17, The Gospel Invades Europe. Acts 17 verses 1 to 3 Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews, and Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging, that Christ must needs have suffered, and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. A synagogue of the Jews, at this time Paul was still going to the Jew first, and then he would immediately reach out to the Gentiles in whatever city he was in. Romans 1 verse 16 Reasoned with them out of the scriptures, the suffering of the cross are all found in the Old Testament scriptures. Psalm 22, Isaiah 53 and Zechariah 12 verse 10 Acts 17 verse 4 And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks a great multitude, and of the chief women not a few. The devout Greeks, this meant they were devout in their worship of God according to the Old Testament. They followed Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3. Acts 17 verses 5 to 7 But the Jews which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. Jason, Romans 16 verse 21 Timothy is my work fellow, and Lucius, and Jason, and Sosipater, my kinsmen, salute you. These that have turned the world upside down, the Jews said Paul and his company had turned the world upside down. They assumed wrongly that it was upside right previously. Judaism was perverted to the point they crucified their own Messiah, and the world was following their God, Satan. Now Israel would no longer be the focus during the dispensation of grace given to the apostle of the Gentiles, and the religious Jews hated him and his company. Israel will be the focus of God once again in the time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 30 verse 7, and especially in the kingdom. Daniel 2 verse 44, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Acts 17 verses 8 to 9, And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. Some of them believed in Thessalonica, and Paul was able to continue to disciple them through his letters and return trips. Acts 17 verses 10 to 11, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. In the synagogue of the Jews, the Jews of Berea were more noble than the Jews of Thessalonica, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so, those things that Paul and his company taught them about Christ from the scriptures. Acts 17 verse 12 Therefore many of them believed, also, of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. Therefore, many of them, Jews in the synagogue of Berea, plus the honorable women and men that were Greeks that also studied in the synagogues. Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3. Many Greeks never got circumcised under Roman rule because there were often consequences for doing that as Jews were often hated wherever they went. Acts 17 verses 13 to 15 But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also, and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea, but Silas and Timotheus abode there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed, they departed. The Jews of Thessalonica, the less noble Jews. Silas and Timotheus, they stayed behind to establish them in the faith. 
Paul did not have time to ordain elders here because of his short stay due to persecution. Acts 17 verses 16 to 17 Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore, disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Therefore, disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews. Again, Paul is still going to the Jew first. Romans 1 verse 16 And with the devout persons, these were devout Gentile or Greek followers of Judaism who studied with the Jews in the synagogue. Acts 17 verse 18 Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, What will this babbler say? Other some, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. The Epicureans, followers of Epicurus who loved to please the senses of sight, smell, taste, and touch. The Stoics, philosophers of personal ethics. Acts 17 verses 19 to 21 And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine, whereof thou speakest, is? For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, we would know therefore what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else, but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Areopagus, where Ares was judged by other Greek gods in mythology. A rocky area at the Acropolis in Athens. Acts 17 verse 22 Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Mars Hill, the hill where Mars, god of war, was judged. He is also known as Ares above. He was the son of Jupiter in Greek mythology. These gods were just devils in disguise. Acts 17 verses 23 to 26 For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life, and breath, and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation. The bounds of their habitation, their national boundaries, which are according to the number of Israel. Deuteronomy 32 verse 8 When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Acts 17 verses 27 to 29 That they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us, for in him we live, and move, and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold, or silver, or stone, graven by art and man's device. The Godhead, the Trinity of God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. One God manifest in the Godhead. Romans 1 verse 20, Colossians 2 verse 9, and 1 John 5 verse 7. Acts 17 verses 30 to 34, And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day, in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So, Paul departed from among them. Howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed, among the which was Dionysius the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. When Paul was in the synagogue in Athens, he disputed with the Jews with the Old Testament scriptures. When he began to speak to the idol worshippers in the marketplace, he did not use the scriptures because they were not a part of their history. He just tells them that God is not in their graven images for he is the creator, not the created, but the Jews need their proof texts to show them that indeed Jesus is very Christ. 
The resurrection of Christ is what they needed to hear about in order to be saved, and Paul did not neglect his duty. Chapter 18 The Corinthian Church is Established Acts 18 verses 1 to 4 After these things Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth, and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them, and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. He reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, Paul faithfully witnessed to his countrymen because he loved them, but also because God commanded him to go to them first during his Acts ministry. We ought to be like Paul today in every church reasoning with them out of Paul's epistles and persuading the pastors and the people about the mystery program that was revealed to the Apostle Paul. Romans 16 verses 25 to 26 Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Ephesians 3 verses 8 to 9 unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. The very doctrines God wants the body of Christ not to be ignorant of, is the very teachings that the body of Christ is ignorant of. Will you help us tell them? I will go unto the Gentiles. Acts 18 verses 5 to 6 And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads, I am clean, from henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. Acts 13 verse 46 and 28 colon 28. They opposed themselves. Paul was told early on to go to the Jews first in every city, and then go to the Gentiles. This was the second time Paul tells a group of Jews that he would from henceforth go to the Gentiles. He did not mean he would wait to go to them after Acts 28 as some teach. He meant as soon as I am done going to the Jews in one city, I will go to the Gentiles in that same city. Acts 18 verses 7 to 8 And he departed thence, and entered into a certain man's house, named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed, and were baptized. Crispus Paul personally baptized Crispus in Corinth. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 14 I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. And many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. Paul also baptized Gaius and the household of Stephanas. 1 Corinthians 1 verses 12 to 17 Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanas, besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Acts 18 verses 9 to 11 Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Paul has numerous visions that came to him in the night because God often did it this way. Acts 16 verse 9 Things changed in Achaia as the word of God spread. Satan got active trying to stop it, and he raised up the very people that have the responsibility to spread it, the Jews. 
Acts 18 verses 12 to 15, And when Gallio was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul, and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason with that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names, and of your law, look ye to it, for I will be no judge of such matters. This fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law. This controversy was concerning the law of Moses, not Roman law. Acts 18 verses 16 to 17, And he drave them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Gallio cared for none of those things. Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, since it was Sosthenes that was responsible for the insurrection that day, which violated Roman law, he was made an example of to the people. Any civil unrest in Achaia would have gotten Gallio into trouble with Rome if he had allowed this to get out of hand and it got reported back to Rome. Sosthenes later gets saved and helps the Apostle Paul in his ministry. In 1 Corinthians 1 verse 1 he is called Sosthenes our brother. This makes a couple of the former rulers of the same synagogue in Corinth new members of the new local church there in Corinth. Acts 18 verse 18 And Paul after this tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Sencria, for he had a vow. Priscilla and Aquila, Acts 18 verses 2 and 26, Romans 16 verse 3 and 1 Corinthians 16 verse 19. Having shorn his head in Sencria, for he had a vow, this Jewish vow that Paul took did not violate his faith, but rather helped him with his own nation to prove to them that he still believed the scriptures. Acts 21 verses 23 to 24. The Jewish practices such as going to the temple and keeping vows and holy days remained during Israel's diminishing. After Acts 28, those practices all ceased with the finishing of the canon of scripture by Paul. Colossians 1 verse 25. Tongues and prophecies ceased when that which was perfect was come, the completed scripture. 1 Corinthians 12 verses 8 to 10 For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Colossians 1 verse 25 Whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God. In Paul's final epistles you will find teachings given concerning this. Paul could no longer heal anyone after arriving in Rome. 2 Timothy 4 verse 20 Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Miletum sick. Acts 18 verses 19 to 21 And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not, but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus. He himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews, Acts 9 verse 20 and Romans 1 verse 16. I must by all means keep this feast. Here we see Paul wishing to keep one of the seven feasts of Israel, three of which required every Jewish male to come to Jerusalem each year. These feasts Paul later learned were but shadows of things to come in Israel's future kingdom. They are not for us today in the body of Christ. They were commanded for Israel to keep. Colossians 2 verses 16 to 17 Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Acts 18 verse 22 And when he had landed at Caesarea, and gone up, and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch, and gone up, and saluted the church, the church in Jerusalem where he came to keep the feast. This return to Antioch ended Paul's second apostolic and missionary journey. 
Paul's third missionary journey. Acts 18 verse 23, And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. He departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order, in the same order he had previously gone on his last apostolic and missionary journey. Strengthening all the disciples, these were not kingdom disciples, but disciples in the body of Christ. Apollos Acts 18 verse 24 And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. A certain Jew named Apollos, he was mighty in the Old Testament scriptures. Born at Alexandria, the second largest city in the Roman Empire. The biggest library in the world was there and many schools of higher learning. This is the place where corrupt manuscripts come from, while the pure manuscripts came out of Antioch of Syria where Paul and Barnabas started out from to reach the world. An eloquent man, in contrast Paul was rude in his speech which led some in Corinth to be divided over personalities. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 12 Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 4 For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? 1 Corinthians 4 verse 6 And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 10 For his letters, say they, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak, and his speech contemptible. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 5 For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest apostles. Acts 18 verse 25 This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the Spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. The way of the Lord, this is a reference made 16 times in Scripture. All of them are references to the law given to Israel. Genesis 18 verse 19, Mark 1 verse 3, and Isaiah 40 verse 3. Knowing only the baptism of John, Apollos received John's baptism, the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin, which pointed to the coming king and his kingdom that were at hand. After Apollos had believed the gospel of the kingdom, he was baptized by John. He then left the area to return to Ephesus prior to Jesus beginning his public ministry. Apollos would have known that one was coming who was mightier than John who would baptize Israel with the Holy Ghost and with fire when he came. He would have also been waiting for that with anticipation as would all of the Jews who were waiting for their king and their kingdom to come. Acts 18 verse 26 And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them, and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. He was preaching what he heard from John the Baptist so many years earlier, without any knowledge of Jesus' ministry. Aquila and Priscilla Acts 18 verses 2 and 26, Romans 16 verse 3 and 1 Corinthians 16 verse 19. Expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly, they gave him a more complete message than he already had. He first had to understand it less perfectly, completely. All Apollos needed was the missing piece of the puzzle, and that was supplied by Aquila and Priscilla when they explained that Jesus was the one John spoke about then he gladly believed Jesus as his Messiah. Nothing is mentioned about whether Apollos was then baptized in Jesus' name, or whether Paul had returned later and laid hands on him. We will meet some similar disciples of John the Baptist in the next chapter. All we know from this verse is that Aguila and Priscilla showed Apollos by scripture that Jesus was the Christ. Acts 18 verse 27 And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. Who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. Apollos helped the believers in Achaia who were saved by grace. It does not say he was a member of the body of Christ and that he taught them grace doctrine, just that he helped them much. 
Acts 18 verse 28, for he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly, shewing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Apollos mightily convinced the Jews, not the Gentiles, publicly, by the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. It does not say he preached the death, burial, and resurrection, just that Jesus was the Christ. Would he tell those very things to them, however? Of course he would. Could these Jews then become members of the body of Christ? Of course. Remember, neither you nor Apollos cannot put anyone into the body of Christ, only God can do that. Apollos was not preaching to Jews in Achaia that were disciples of John the Baptist or of Jesus and the Twelve. Those Jews which believed Apollos' preaching became a part of the body of Christ. It does not matter that he was a previous follower of John the Baptist. Chapter 19 Have ye received the Holy Ghost? Acts 19 verses 1 to 2 And it came to pass that, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coasts came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Finding certain disciples, as Paul's custom was, whenever he went to a new city, he would first seek out the Jewish community there to preach to them. They were either disciples of Apollos or John the Baptist before his beheading. Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? They had not even heard of the Holy Ghost before. They should have known, however, how God would one day pour out his Spirit from Joel and the other prophets. They had heard from Moses, Job, and Jeremiah that when a person died, they would give up the ghost, but that was the only times in the Scripture Old Testament where the word ghost was ever used. They knew that they had a spirit and that it would depart from them. When they died, but there is no mention of the words Holy Ghost found anywhere in the Old Testament. Acts 19 verses 3 to 4 And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Unto what then were ye baptized, unto John, or unto Jesus Christ were the only two answers they could have given. Here are some disciples of John the Baptist who had traveled to Ephesus and who had not heard that Jesus was the Christ. These twelve Jews were incomplete in their knowledge of who Christ was, so Paul enlightened them that Jesus was the Christ as seen above in verse 4. Unto John's baptism, this was for Israel only, and it was a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Mark 1 verse 4 If you will remember the twelve apostles were all baptized by John the Baptist, but they were not baptized again because they already believed that Jesus was the Christ, these men in Ephesus were just finding that out. Acts 19 verses 5 to 7 When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They needed to believe that Jesus was the Christ, and then he baptized them in Jesus' name. When Paul laid hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, Luke 1 verse 35, Acts 1 colon 8, 2 colon 1 dash 4, 8 colon 17 dash 18, and 10 colon 41 dash 47. While Paul was the one that baptized them in water in the name of the Lord Jesus, it was Jesus himself that baptized these 12 Jewish disciples of John the Baptist with the Holy Ghost, not Paul. Only an apostle could give the Holy Ghost like Peter and John did in Acts 8 verses 17 to 18. Paul was able to do the same thing. Just as it is the Holy Spirit that baptizes us into the body of Christ today, not some person in a baptistry. Paul could not put anyone into any program, only God could do that. There was no mention of trusting in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection to these 12 Jewish believers, but there is also no mention of the opposite either. And they spake with tongues and prophesied. Tongues were for a sign to the unbelieving Jews. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 22 And all the men were about 12, 
these disciples of John the Baptist received the gift of the Holy Ghost that was promised to believing Israel in the book of Joel. It was confirmed in the Gospels, and it was conferred upon those who had believed Jesus was the Christ in the early part of the book of Acts. They had not done that yet. There were twelve Jewish men, twelve is the number of Israel. Notice that when they believed that Jesus was the Christ, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Paul laid hands on them and the Holy Ghost came on them, not in them as he does with us today. Acts 8 verses 17 to 18. The Holy Spirit knew who belonged to which program. These were kingdom saints and they would receive the baptism with the Holy Ghost after they were baptized in Jesus' name. Then Paul had to lay hands on these Jews as Peter and John did with the kingdom believers in Samaria with Philip in Acts chapter 8. Tongues were for a sign, and the Jews required a sign. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 22 was written prior to this. Had these twelve Jewish men not been baptized by John the Baptist, they would have become a part of the body of Christ after hearing the gospel of grace. They had already sealed their future when they repented at the preaching of John the Baptist and Paul just filled in the rest of the information to these kingdom saints about who it was that John the Baptist had been preaching about. Acts 19 verses 8 to 9 And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. He went into the synagogue. The first thing that Paul told them from the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ and that he had to suffer and be crucified and rise again. The things concerning the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is not the kingdom of heaven. Paul never preached the kingdom was at hand. Paul was trying to deliver these Jews from darkness so that they could be translated into the kingdom of God, of his dear son. Colossians 1 verse 13 And separated the disciples, he separated the believers from the unbelievers, and from them he would form a local church in that area. Acts 19 verses 10 to 12 and this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. All they in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, Paul was originally told not to go to Asia at the time he wanted to go there in Acts 16 verse 6. God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, special miracles that were different from those that the twelve apostles to Israel did, like the use of handkerchiefs or aprons which had touched his body that could heal people. Paul could do miracles up until he went to Rome in Acts 28 at Melito where he healed Publius' father and many of the islanders with diseases, and he was not killed by a venomous beast that had bitten him. The Jews require a sign. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 22 and 2 Corinthians 12 verses 11 to 12. Acts 19 verse 13 Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, the Jews were dispersed into all the countries of the world by God, and certain of them were exorcists. They were ignorant about what they were getting themselves involved in. This word is only used here and in Genesis 4 verses 12 to 14 concerning Cain. Exorcists, one who adjures another, or charges them, or puts someone under an oath in the name of a king or God. Matthew 26 verse 63. Call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, they no doubt had heard that Paul was casting out demons in the name of Jesus, and they thought it may work for them being fellow Jews, but something was missing in their walk with God, salvation. They did not know that being a Jew, like Paul, was not enough, you had to know the Jesus that Paul preached before you could call upon his name. Acts 19 verses 14 to 17 And there were seven sons of one Siva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul the first know, but who are ye? 
And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And chief of the priests, what was a priest doing outside of Jerusalem so far from the temple he was commanded to minister in? There was no Old Testament office of exorcist that any priest was allowed to be a part of. And fear fell on them all. Those at Ephesus would get the message from this loud and clear. God was not favoring Israel anymore, and those believing in Jesus increased in that region because of these Jewish exorcists' failed attempt. Acts 19 verses 18 to 20 And many that believed came and confessed and shewed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it fifty thousand pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Curious arts, witchcraft, soothsaying, fortune-telling, and the casting of spells. The best thing that you can do when you find the truth of the gospel is to get rid of those things that led you into darkness in the first place. Acts 19 verses 21 to 22 After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the Spirit, when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So, he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. Paul purposed in the Spirit. Paul knew all along he would eventually end up in Rome because as the apostle of the Gentiles he must go to the capital of the Gentile world. Paul must go there, not Peter. Can you see why Satan wants everyone to believe that Peter was in Rome? It is because of who Paul is and his office as the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13 if Peter is in Rome, then he can lay some claim to reaching the Gentile world, but he can only claim the family and friends of Cornelius as Gentile converts. Satan wants to mix Peter's program to the Jews and with the grace message preached by Paul and remove Paul from his position as the apostle of the Gentiles. Timotheus and Erastus Timothy and Erastus were sent into neighboring Macedonia to set things in order there while he was preparing to go to Jerusalem. Acts 19 verses 23 to 27 And the same time there arose no small stir about that way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear, that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods, which are made with hands, so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also, that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipped. That way, also called, the way of the Lord. Acts 18 verse 25. Acts 19 verses 28 to 34. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion, and having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing, and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Paul was forbidden by the Jews from speaking to Gentiles. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 16 forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. 
Acts 19 verses 35 to 41, And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshipper of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet, and to do nothing rashly. For ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. Wherefore if Demetrius, and the craftsmen which are with him, have a matter against any man, the law is open, and there are deputies, let them implead one another. But if ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. Robbers of churches, notice that the temples of Diana here are called churches. The word church simply means a called out assembly. This is only time that Luke uses the Greek word hierosolos instead of ecclesia, which is then translated correctly to show that an assembly of any kind is a church or a temple. There are many churches in the scriptures, but only one church which is Christ's body that we belong to today if we have trusted Christ. We are the one new man that is neither Jew nor Greek. Ephesians 2 verses 11 to 16 There was the church in the wilderness mentioned in Acts 7 by Stephen, which was the assembly of the children of Israel that were called out of Egypt to assemble in the wilderness. There was the Jerusalem church which was made of none but the lost sheep of the house of Israel. James, the Lord's half-brother, became its pastor, and the twelve apostles were in it along with the little flock who the kingdom was given to, making it a called-out assembly of Jews only. Luke 12 verse 32 The town clerk here had warned the people of Ephesus that they would suffer the wrath of Rome if they were to riot contrary to Rome's decrees for lawfulness in its realm. Chapter 20 The Gospel of the Grace of God Acts 20 verse 1 And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples, and embraced them, and departed for to go into Macedonia. It is in Macedonia that Paul penned the great epistle to the Romans, and when he came into Greece, he wrote the book of 2 Corinthians. Paul called unto him the disciples, a disciple is a student of the word of God. This title is used of both grace believers and kingdom saints. Acts 20 verses 2 to 3, And when he had gone over those parts, and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece, and there abode three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him, as he was about to sail into Syria, he purposed to return through Macedonia. With every new revelation that Paul received, he would undoubtedly face more persecution and trouble from some kingdom saints not wanting to recognize any new revelations. Acts 20 verses 4 to 6 And there accompanied him into Asia Sopater of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and Secundus, and Gaius of Derb, and Timotheus, and of Asia, Tychicus and Trophimus. These going before tarried for us at Troas. And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and came unto them to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. The days of unleavened bread. Why is this Jewish feast mentioned? One of the reasons is to mark the timing of Paul's travels on this trip. It would have been after the Jewish feast of Passover and before the feast of first fruits, so it was in the spring. The first day of the week. Acts 20 verse 7 And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Upon the first day of the week, Sunday is the first day of the week when many meet to remember that Christ arose on the first day of the week. The Jews looked forward to a day of rest on the last day of the week, the Sabbath, and now we in the body of Christ look back to the day he obtained our eternal rest, salvation. The disciples came together to break bread. This meant that they met for fellowship around the word of God. They had a meal and an evening service that lasted unto midnight. A lot of miracles happened at midnight in the Bible when things are at their darkest. Acts 20 verses 8 to 9, And there were many lights in the upper chamber, where they were gathered together. 
and there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep, and as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep, and fell down from the third loft, and was taken up dead. There were many lights in the upper chamber, there was light, illumination, where the word of God is being taught correctly. Another miracle at the darkest hour. There sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus. He fell out the window because the third loft was in the upper chamber where they were assembled. Deep sleep. A lot of miracles happened in the Bible when a deep sleep came upon someone. These words are used together ten times and nine of those times a miraculous thing is taking place. Genesis 2 verse 21 And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Genesis 15 verse 12 And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and, lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. 1 Samuel 26 verse 12 So David took the spear and the cruise of water from Saul's bolster, and they gapped them away, and no man saw it, nor knew it, neither awaked, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord was fallen upon them. Job 4 verse 13 In thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth on men, Job 33 colon 14 15 For God speaketh once, yet twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, Daniel 8 verse 18 Now as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground, but he touched me and set me upright. Daniel 10 verse 9 Yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. A young man named Eutychus, his name means fortunate. Acts 20 verse 10 And Paul went down, and fell on him, and embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. Luke the physician wrote that Eutychus was taken up dead, he should know. Eutychus fell from the third loft. Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him, Paul went down to the first floor and embraced him. Just a touch from Paul's hand or a handkerchief from him could heal a person before Acts 28 according to scripture. Trouble not, the only other times when trouble not is used in scripture are times when very fortunate things happen to, or for people. Luke 7 colon 6, 849 and Acts 15 verse 19. Acts 20 verses 11 to 12 When he therefore was come up again, and had broken bread, and eaten, and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. When he therefore was come up again, up to the third loft. They brought the young man alive. Paul was still able to heal people here in Acts 20, which would have been nearing the end of his last apostolic journey. Once Paul arrived at his final destination, Rome, he would no longer be able to heal anyone. 2 Timothy 4 verse 20 Acts 20 verses 13 to 16 And we went before to ship, and sailed unto Assos, there intending to take in Paul, for so had he appointed, minding himself to go afoot. And when he met with us at Assos, we took him in, and came to Mytilene. And we sailed thence, and came the next day over against Chios, and the next day we arrived at Samos, and tarried at Tragilium, and the next day we came to Miletus. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus, because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost, again, this helps us to determine the time of year. Pentecost was the fourth feast on the Jewish calendar. It was a big deal for Jews, and the city would be crawling with Jews from all over the world, many of which had heard about all the new teachings swirling around and would be looking for answers in Jerusalem. They would not find any answers from the religious Jews there, but they would be able to find the answers to their questions from Paul. Acts 20 verses 17 to 21 And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church, 
And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know, from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears, and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have shewed you, and have taught you publicly, and from house to house testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance towards God and also faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Under the gospel of the grace of God, Jews and Gentiles need to repent of their unbelief by believing Jesus died for their sins, was buried, and rose again the third day. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. During the time in which Jesus and the Twelve preached the gospel of the kingdom to Israel, it was Israel that needed to repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, while believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God for the remission of those sins. Acts 20 verses 22 to 25 And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not bound by man to go where he did not choose, but committed to go wherever God wanted him to go to accomplish his will. So that I may finish my course with joy, what course is he talking about? He wants to finish his course testifying the gospel of the grace of God. He wants to finish what he started, and to finish my course, in order for Paul to finish his course which he received of Jesus Christ, he must first have started it which he did in Acts chapter 9 when he was first told the course that he would follow. Acts 9 verse 15 The gospel of the grace of God, this is first used here in this chapter, but it is used to describe Paul's course which he wants to finish, not start, with joy. The gospel of the grace of God is another title used to describe the gospel of Christ that Paul had been preaching all along. That was his ministry to preach, and it is ours still today. Were things changing for Israel as time was passing, and they were diminishing? Absolutely, but the gospel that Paul preached was not. Preaching the kingdom of God, he then goes on to say in verse 25 that what he had preached unto them, the kingdom of God. That is the whole counsel of God. It is not the kingdom of heaven preached by the John, Jesus, and the twelve in the Gospels in Acts 1-8. to Acts 20 verses 26 to 28 Wherefore I take you to record this day, that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take ye therefore unto yourselves, and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. This means that Paul shared everything that had been revealed unto him up to that point concerning the revelation of the mystery. Romans 16 verses 25 to 26 to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, 99% of the time God uses the terms of shepherds and flocks to describe Israel, but this is the one exception along with verse 29. The word flock only means a group of something. Every flock is not a flock of sheep. There are flocks of birds. The church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood, Jesus Christ is God, and he shed his blood for his church. This blood is perfect sinless blood. Acts 20 verses 29 to 31 For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch, and remember, that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn every one night and day with tears. After my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Paul refers to the church of God here, and he calls them a flock, meaning sheep. He does this only once. Have you ever heard of the phrase, 
the exception to the rule? We know that believing Israel is called the little flock in Luke 12 verse 32. Paul is not talking to Israel's kingdom saints here. He is talking to the church, which is Christ's body. The main tactic Satan employs to destroy churches today is with seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. He gets people to wrongly divide the word of truth. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 Acts 20 verses 32 to 33 And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified the words and to the word of his grace lets us in the body of christ know we have our own inheritance we do not inherit israel's promises acts 20 verses 34 to 35 yea ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me I have shewed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. The words of the Lord Jesus, these words are never written in the Gospels, but it does not say that. It says that Jesus said these words. Not everything that was spoken, or done by Jesus, was written down. John 21 verse 25 And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Acts 20 verses 36 to 38 And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore, and fell on Paul's neck, and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him unto the ship. For many of them it would be the last time they would ever see Paul again because he knew that once he got to Jerusalem he would be arrested and eventually sent to Rome. There he would bear witness before kings and governors and most likely die, but he was ready for whatever course God had for him. Thank you.